Marcia Jennings. And when did you um, first come to the college? I started in 1985, and I was the coordinator of the respiratory care program at that time. Okay. And what were you doing before um, 85? Um, I worked in hospitals all over Connecticut, in Bridgeport, Danbury, Hartford, um, and I was a respiratory therapist. And how did you hear about the job at MCC? Oh, everybody knew about MCC. So um, I knew that there was going to be a job opening. And actually, I would sort of even prepped for it because I was doing some teaching at St. Francis Hospital. And so um, I kind of had an in that I was a clinical instructor. I was very closely aligned with the college at that time and heard that way. Now, uh, were you interviewed by a search committee? Yes. Do you remember any of the people who were on it? Um, I remember George Christensen, who chaired the search committee. Um, and I remember coming in in the middle of summer in the pouring rain for my interview. And um, what was kind of funny about it is I was newly married. I had gotten married less than a week before and actually cut my honeymoon short to come for my interview here. And everyone in the field of respiratory knew me by my maiden name. And George Christensen, I said, I was filling out the application, and I said, I'm not sure what name to use because should I keep my, my maiden name or use my married name? And George said, well, of course you're going to use your married name. And I wanted the job, so I immediately put down my married name. <laughs> that was George. <laughs> so what was it like um, your first year here or the first couple of years? It was very different, very different from working in a hospital where um, you, you punched a time clock. You, If you had to stay late, you stayed late. Um, you came in no matter what the weather was. Um, coming here was very relaxed, a very different, very different place to work. Um, but it was, it, was, it was enjoyable at that time, but not as enjoyable as it became years later. Um, the college had a terrific reputation, so I was very proud to be working here. Now, at that time, there was the East Campus, and the, the Low Building was probably in the first or second year. Right. So where, where were your uh, laboratory facilities? It was all on the Lower Campus, and we had kind of a dedicated room and some, some space in the, in the lab area. <laughs> and um, you know, we were in a room that the termites used to <laughs> actually come every year. And so we had to deal with that, but we were okay with that because we were scientists, so we didn't mind so much. Um, but we, you know, when I look now, we had an overhead projector. That's as good as the technology got. And we, we ran things using tanks of oxygen. Um, now in this building, we have piped in air, piped in oxygen, so it's very different. So you moved to this newer campus after the year 2000? Well after, yeah. We were down in the lower campus for a long time. So, um, yeah, almost until the end. Um, thinking back to the mid-80s, were the students different then than they are today? I don't think so. I really don't. Um, we, we, the students were a little bit older, but not much. Mid-20s, maybe early 30s. They, they were really coming for the same reasons, to change their lives, to transform their lives. That's been my experience the whole time I've been here. Okay. And at what point did you move from a purely faculty member and you were a program coordinator mm -hmm. to more of an administrative uh, position? I had an, an interesting kind of history here. People took sabbaticals and I got to kind of fill in for them. So for one semester, I was the director of admissions when Andrew Pertuna took a um, sabbatical. Then I was the director of the liberal arts division when Toby Tamarkin took a sabbatical. So I had a taste of all of these different kinds of administrative jobs before I finally applied for a full-time position doing that work. And you know, if you, who were some of the people in the mid-'80s who you recall as being particularly um, helpful or involved with the, your work here? The people I remember most <laughs> were the dynamic women that I met on campus, and that would be Miriam Bianchi, Lois Daigle, and they would talk about equality for women and getting equal pay for equal work, things that were never a part of my professional life or my job. You know, you worked in a hospital, you didn't question those things, but they questioned that here. And um, they kind of, 
I don't know, they took the women under their wing and made sure that what was happening was fair. Um, it, it was a whole different world. It was, it was very socially conscious, and we were worried about politics at the time, which was very odd for me to have that be part of the job. What changes have you seen in 25 years? Well, certainly the technology, the buildings, um, that's changed quite a bit. Um, but, you know, the people working here is like a gift. Um, people are always, I mean, really, even they're always in a good mood. Um, people are happy to see you. They smile at you in the hallway. They say hello to you. And I, that doesn't happen everywhere. And that that has been the longest lasting kind of attribute of this college that makes it such a good place to work. Some of the uh, previous guests have uh, said that over 30 years or so, they felt that the college became more professionalized. Is that your experience? I'm going to say no, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Um, the Early on, I think the people that worked here earlier on, in some ways, I don't know, were a little more dedicated as professionals, as academics. I want to say they were even smarter, or they seemed smarter to me. Maybe I was younger. But they seemed so smart. And now there's so many part-timers, I don't quite get that same feeling. Um, what are some of the things you're most proud of in terms of your career? I don't, I don't, I don't really think it was because of me, but being able to see students come in who <clears throat> were told they could never do well in high school, um, that they would never be a success, and they came in and changed their lives, and they ended up with, luckily for me, in Allied Health, they had these great professions, they made good money, um, they were able to support families. You know, I saw my students go from being single and kind of carefree, and I still see these same, same people now in the profession working. And they have families, they have prestigious jobs, they make good money, they're, they contribute to society. They, they totally change their lives by coming here. Have any of your former students come back um, either as part or full-time faculty here? Um, yes. <laughs> Um, quite a few of them in healthcare come back, and the ones that I see also work in the clinics with our students. So I see them all the time. Okay. What advice would you give um, to someone newly hired at the college Just to share sharing your experience with them? What I tell people now is this is the best place in the world to work. It is the best place. Um, you can't find a better job than this, and I believe it. Um, I try to tell them to take advantage of what there is to offer, you know, because they can get professional development here, they can get training, they can learn to teach online, they can do all that, and they should do that. Um, I also tell them to check their email because a lot happens by email. <laughs> it does. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. Can you elaborate more on the technology from the overhead projectors to? what you have now as resources that your staff have? Um, probably having internet access is huge. Um, just being able to do that in the classroom is is really, really huge. The, the thing that you see more, actually, is the students. You'll ask them to do something or you'll have a question in class and they'll pull out their phone and they'll find an answer for you. And I think that's a challenge sometimes that you have to kind of go with what the students are doing. So. Um, I was trying to teach students at one time to set up what was an electronic portfolio that I had just been trained on. So I'm going through the process with them, and I'm going around the room, and I see that one student, I go to his, his desktop computer, and his picture is already on the screen. He took a picture of himself in the class and uploaded it to this program and had it posted before I even really knew how to do that. So you kind of have to be ready for that kind of thing and, and go with it. But what does that speak to in terms of professional development? I mean, I mention that because I know a number of years ago there was a retiree who came back to teach biology and we, we treated him as if he couldn't, he was incompetent, and yet he was a distinguished biology teacher. 
Is uh, you have a kid at that? Oh, very much so. It's not hard to learn. Um, I think you have to be open to learning about it. That's the big thing. But also, we need to be open to people doing it. And then, you know, I was a division director for a long time. There were professors, I probably shouldn't use a name, one particular professor who was an excellent, excellent lecturer, but because I was going to class to evaluate, turned everything on, and ended up lecturing with the, the blue of the projector on his face the whole time because he really didn't know how to use it. And had he turned that off, he would have been just excellent, but he felt compelled to have to have all this stuff on at the time. So you don't have to use all of that to be very, very good.